Sarut. <laughs> Sarut. I'm Vivi, I'm an automotive content creator from Berlin, Germany, and today we're gonna take pictures of this Volkswagen Golf R. This is not my Golf R, this one belongs to Gene, he is also a German content creator from Berlin and he got this car from Volkswagen for a few weeks to test it out and he can tell you some facts about this beautiful car. Yeah, as Fabi said, we have here a Golf 8R Performance and this car has around 333 horsepower and 420 newton meters. It takes about four and a half seconds to uh, get up on 100 uh, kilometers per hour, which is pretty fast for a Golf. But this car is also pretty expensive. You pay around 75,000 euros for this piece here, which is a bit too much for a Golf, in my opinion. But it's up to you. You can judge on yourself. What do you think about this car? And uh, write it down to the comments. All right, let's take a closer look at the car and then let's take some pictures. Okay, we are on the GoPro now. Let's take some pictures. First, we have it parked here at this uh, parking lot. This is actually an um, Aldi supermarket uh, with a nice facade. I think it matches the car quite well. The sun is burning. It's uh, 30 degrees, so I'm already sweating my ass off. But let's see how this goes. Okay, I tried to get a little bit lower to make the car look more sporty, even if it's just from the side. Okay, so from the front it will be easy to take pictures because there are no cars behind. From the back we need to see how it will work out. I always try to first get all the total shots, so all the shots from the distance and then I always try to get a little bit closer to the subject and get some detail shots in. So now we run into the problem that we have this car parked right here, but I'm sure Photoshop can fix it in the end as well. Okay, so now this car is driving away, so hopefully we can take better pictures of the front of the car and from the back, because we can use every piece of space we can get. All right, let's see what we can do. Oh yeah, that's better already. Okay, let's quickly go to the back before somebody else is parking there again. Yes, that looks good. I'm a little bit worried about the shadows, but we should manage. I go a little bit uh, more to the back so I can zoom in more. It gives a little bit of a better look and we get the second story as well of the building. Okay, now we got all the distant shots. Let's focus on the details a little bit. As you can see, here's a little IQ Light logo. I would like to take a picture of that. I hope I can get rid of the reflections with the polarizer. 
maybe from the top. Can't forget about the Golf R logo, of course. Let's see, maybe we can get it with some nice reflections of the rainbow on the wall. Maybe some detail on the spoiler. That looks nice, I would say. Maybe also vertical. Can't forget about the wheels, of course. On this wheel, the logo in the uh, center cap is relatively straight, which I appreciate, and I don't need to do so much of uh, adjustments in Photoshop. And of course, we can't forget about the Akrapovic. All right, I think it's time to move the car. Okay, Jean is now moving the car so I can get a good front and back shot. This color just looks amazing, especially in the sun. This must be one of the best uh, Volkswagen colors ever made. And let's try to get him straight. Very good. Okay, the car is reparked. Let's take the last bunch of pictures and then we are out of here because it's freaking hot. Maybe try to get a shot just from the rainbow reflections. Okay, we are done here. Several months later. Okay, welcome to my editing setup. Since recording the last part of the video that you just saw, three months have already passed. That means for me that I already completed editing all the pictures that I had from this shoot. Anyways, I would love to show you my process on how I edited them in Lightroom, so maybe you can take something away for your own edits. So, without further ado, let's jump into Lightroom. All right, so as you can see, I already opened the picture that we're gonna be editing today. This is the first picture I took on the shoot and for me, it's also kind of the main picture. It's just super nice in my opinion that we have those straight lines in the background. The car from the side, which in my opinion is the best angle of looking at this car. So these are all the reasons why we will edit this picture today. The procedure on how I edit pictures always varies from shoot to shoot. Um, but I have some things that I usually always do in the beginning and that's what I want to start with today as well. The first step for me would be the transform tab. Here I just want to make sure to straighten the image so it's pleasant to the eye, uh, there are no crooked lines and everything looks nice, neat and satisfying. In this case I will select the auto function for that and that does a pretty good job. Step number two for me is the lens corrections. We will open this right now. The profile corrections are already enabled and we're just gonna tick the box here for remove chromatic aberration. 
Now, of course, not much has changed, but if you would zoom in 100%, you could tell some minor differences. Anyways, it's always good to activate it. For the next step, we close those two pass tabs to open up the detail tab, scroll down a little bit, and the first thing that we will adjust is the sharpening. This is now set to 40. I would like to increase that a little bit to 85. You can also zoom into the picture to assess the sharpening a little bit better and a little bit more. Then I will go to masking. I will hold the option key and drag the slider to the right up until I can see a good contrast where I'm only sharpening the edges of the image. In this case, I like the value of 80. Next, we will go to the manual noise reduction. This is a very bright image that I took with an ISO of 80. So there's not much to denoise, but still, I like to always increase the luminance to at least 15 to smooth some minor noises out. And then the last step that I'm going to do in this tab is to increase the smoothness of the color to around 70. All right, after all those small changes, it's now time to do some bigger changes in the basic tab. For that, I'm just going to close the details tab, go all the way to the top and open up the basics. I will also zoom out of the image again. And first, I want to adjust the white balance a bit because with those pictures, I think I shot them on uh, auto white balance. And this is usually pretty good with the Sony, but I have the feeling that this picture is a little bit too cold. So in order to play around with it and see what looks best, I'm just going to take the temperature slider and just try out a little bit. The original value is 4450. I'm just looking for increasing it for a little bit. So I'm probably going to take it to 4800. That looks a little bit better in my opinion. We can see the before and after here. I'm also going to be increasing the tint a little bit to plus 15. And then we are all set for the rest of the editing process. Now we come to the tone settings and there, first of all, I want to brighten up the whole image a little bit. So I'm going to take the exposure and put it up to 70 in this case. This looks a little bit blown out right now, but we will take care of that by reducing the highlights at the same time. In this case, a value of minus 22 should be good for now. I'm also going to increase the contrast by plus 10. We see that the car itself is a little bit dark now, so I'm going to raise the shadows a bit. In this case, a value of plus 25 looks great. I'm also going to in keep increasing the whites to plus 20 and decrease the blacks a bit to give it a little bit more of a contrast to minus 4. Now it's time to bring out a little bit of texture in the image. You see here that especially on the concrete, there are a lot of textured particles in there. So we can bring them out a bit by increasing the texture slider right here. Not too much, just a little bit. I'm going to put it on plus 10. I'm also going to increase the clarity a bit to plus 15 and I'm going to dehaze the image a bit by also increasing this slider all the way up to plus 15. Since there are a lot of beautiful colors in the image, I'm also going to increase the vibrance to plus 25 and the saturation for plus 10. We can now take a look at the before and after. This was the image before. This is the image after and I think it's already looking way, way better than before. Mind you, I already know all the values that I'm putting in right here because I already experimented with the picture beforehand and finished editing it completely. Uh, usually there's a lot more of trial and error going back and forth, adjusting one setting, going back to the other, especially later with the colors. It takes a lot of time to just play around with it. You invest a lot of time in your first image. After that, it's easy. You just copy and paste the settings to the other images and maybe just do slight adjustments. But I just want you to know that I don't know all those values out of the top of my head for no reason. I actually did a lot of experimentation beforehand. So that's why I can now easily put the values in. And I try to just give you a little bit of an explanation on what those values are actually doing with the image. So we are now done with the basics panel. I'm going to close that again and I'm going to go into the tone curves. The only thing I'm going to do for this picture is to do a slight S curve which will increase the contrast. I put a point right here and I put a point right here. I'm going to pull the highlights up a tiny bit and just decrease the shadows a little bit like this. Not much, really a gentle soft curve. And when you look at the before and after, that's before, that's after. There's not a huge difference, but it's definitely noticeable and it makes the image look a little bit better in my opinion. All right, next step. This would be the color mixer. So I'm going to close the tone curve, go into the color mixer. For this picture, I chose to do the following settings. The red hue, I decreased to minus 10. Orange, I bumped up a little bit towards the yellower part to plus 10. Yellow, plus 4. Green, I decreased all the way down to minus 100, which makes it more yellow than green. Aqua, minus 15, makes it a bit more teal. 
Blue minus two, very slight adjustment. Purple gets a little bit more reddish by putting it up to plus 12. And magenta also gets a slight bump with plus two. Now we need to decide what colors should be more vibrant in the picture and which shouldn't. We will start with decreasing red a little bit by minus 10, put orange to minus 12, bump up yellow to plus two, completely take out green, bump up the aqua to plus 20, also increase the saturation of the blue a little bit by putting it on plus eight, and then take a little bit of purple out by setting it to minus 20. Last but not least, the luminance. The reds in the image I want to decrease a little bit, minus 12. Same with the oranges. Yellow will be a bit lighter to plus two. Completely darken the green, bump up the aqua a bit again. Also put the blue again on plus eight and reduce the purple brightness to minus 20. That's it with this panel. Okay, we're gonna close the color mixer panel and then go to calibration. Those are settings that I either do at the very beginning of an edit or at the very end of an edit. In this case, I did it at the end just to adjust the color space a little bit to make it more pleasant to the eye. Especially when you have a certain car color in an image, you don't want to mess with this too much because it really changes up the whole color profile of the image. Um, so I really did just some minor minor adjustments. So first we took care of the reds. We're gonna just increase it a little bit by plus 10. Then we go to the greens, also increase that by plus 10, and then slightly reduce the blue hue by minus two. If we go now and look at the before and after, the changes are really not big, but you can tell in the paint of the car that it gets a little bit brighter and that just gets it a little bit closer to the color of the car, how it was in real life when I was taking the pictures. All right, now we are done with the basic edit. We can take again a look at the before and the after picture, but we are not done yet. One last step that is, in my opinion, very, very important, especially when it comes to car photography and photography in general, is the use of masks within Lightroom. This gives you a lot of control about a certain part of the image that you pre-select and then you can do all your normal adjustments. So the first thing that I want to do with this image is to darken the asphalt or the concrete uh, because that will just bring out the car more, it will bring out the colors more and it uh, will just look better in general. So what I'm going to do is go to the mask section right here, create a new linear gradient and pull this all the way from the car, hold shift so it's straight and then I'm going to do my adjustments. In this case, I'm gonna put the exposure all the way down to minus two. I will also decrease the shadows by minus 15. And then in order to bring out those parking lines here a little bit better and to create a little bit more contrast of the texture in the road, I'm gonna scroll down to clarity and bump this up to 50. That already looks great in my opinion, but we have a slight problem. And we can see that when we go back to the mask, just hover above the thumbnail and then we see that also parts of the car are affected by this mask. We wanna reduce that, so we go on the, to the little minus icon right here, take the brush, zoom into the image, maybe adjust the feather, and then we just delete the mask from the areas of the car where we don't want it to be. All right, if we zoom out, it looks amazing in my opinion. But this is not the only mask that we're gonna use. We're gonna use a second one also for the ground. And for that, we go to the plus symbol, go to linear gradient, and this time draw a mask from the very bottom all the way to the start of the car. And the only thing we're gonna do right here is to also decrease the exposure a bit by minus 26. And that just creates a nice soft gradient from dark to a little bit brighter. Next, to put a better focus on the car itself, we're gonna create another mask and this time we choose the radial gradient. I'm just gonna create it from the middle of the car and drag it all the way out like this so that the car is within this first little circle here. Then I'm gonna invert the selection and all I'm gonna do here again is decrease the exposure to minus 0.5. So that just darkens the edges around the car and creates more of a focus point towards the middle of the image. All right, to me, everything is looking fine. Everything besides the wheels. As you can see, the wheels are very, very dark because they're in the shadow, they are black, so they disappear a little bit in the image. I wanna bring them out again a bit. For that, we create another mask, another radial gradient, this time 
create it from the middle of the wheels all the way to the outside. Then we adjust the inner circle and drag it out towards the end of the rim. Then we're gonna lift the shadows by 35. We're gonna increase the contrast by 50 and we're gonna go down to clarity and increase that by 25. But in order to get it on both wheels, we're gonna select this one again, right click, duplicate radial gradient one, and then just drag this one onto the other wheel. All right, that's it. We can close the mask panel, zoom out, and again look at the before and the after. I hope that you like the result. It's not crazy different, but I think it's different enough to elevate it to the next level and to make it look way, way better than it started out with as the raw image. After editing all my favorite pictures from the shoot in Lightroom like this, I also retouched them in Photoshop. I won't show you all of this right now, but it's basically just removing, distracting things in the image. There are several ways of doing that in Photoshop and maybe I will get into that in a future video. You can just let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I will now put some before and after pictures on screen so you can actually see what kind of a difference it can make to clean up your image in Photoshop. You can also see all the final images on my website and on my Instagram profile. Feel free to check them out. The links are in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would be very happy to see you next time. Until then, peace.